start up. Ha! Oh, Bleak Dystopia. Oh, I hate this game so much. I haven't been playing it for that long, but it just feels like forever. Jesus, it's a slow movement. I think that's what really gets to me. It's like it's like you could have just if it was just like you could double the speed, it would be it would be okay, and I wouldn't I wouldn't mind this game so much. There's no run button, is there? It's not that I'm, it's not that I'm stupid. I mean, it doesn't. Sh I can't see the controls. But I'm fairly sure there's no run button. If there was just a run button, or just like walk a little faster button, I would find this bearable. But there's not. Oh god. The bleak dystopia of walking slowly through a bleak dystopia. I guess it really adds to the atmosphere of my sadness. Nice job making me extra sad by making me walk slowly. <laughs> oh, you motherfuckers. I hate you so much for making this game. Alright, let's play. Let's read something. I find it very strange how um, one's life can change drastically and everything can suddenly turn around for the worse. I was a talented singer and people adored me. Even when the world was the way it was, some people still loved hearing my music. Music was my joy in my entire life. My parents weren't supportive of me, uh, but I still persevered. I believed that I shouldn't let it, them stop me from following my heart. Eventually, I had to cut them off so I could do what I really wanted to do. They wanted me to be a medical doctor, but I refused. Also, I was too stupid. My other siblings can fulfill their dreams for them. Wait, can fulfill what? My other siblings can fulfill their dreams for them if they wanted to. I met a guy while I was on a tour. He was a very big fan of me and pushed me on days when I felt like giving up. We fell in love. Well, at least I fell in love with him and I thought everything was going great. We talked about our plans for the future and how we would live. I told him I had always wanted a family and sooner or later, I would have to quit doing music so I could focus on my family. All my hopes and dreams were dashed on the day I woke up to find out that he had left me. He stole my money and ran away. I had given him access to pretty much everything, and he took advantage of uh, and or, and B took advantage of that. I guess it was be he. He took advantage of that. No, it's not B. It's he took advantage of that to steal from me. My whole world shattered. Sorry, my whole world shattered. And it felt like I wasn't going to survive it. Now I've quit doing music, and I don't know if I'll ever continue. I feel like I still have my while life ahead of me. No, you know you have your whole life ahead of you. I'm 25, and I can still make something worthwhile for myself. All right, well, staying positive, I like that. All right, um. So, I'm, I'm supposed to go in here next, right? No, uh, yeah, I am supposed to go in there next, but not from here. Ah, there we go. I can go, I can go in from here, right? No, no, I can't. I know I can get in there eventually. Anything else out here? Looks like there's something out here. Yep, there he is. He's coming out of the sewer, right? Hello. Worker. Does this country have borders? This question has troubled me a lot. And I've not gotten a, a clear answer to it. Most people I ask claim that it's only the government that can say if we still have borders. I think that is bullshit, though. I want to see how far and why the whole the destruction went. If now, because of the fall of the society, countries didn't care about borders and we don't have to be segregated like we are currently. I'm a construction worker and I've had to do a lot of tough jobs just to be able to take care of myself. I'm a pretty big guy with muscles, big enough to do my job well. I've been very successful working in the construction, uh, in construction. 
sorry, I'm, I'm very, I've been very successful working in construction. One thing I also enjoy is doing is playing the cello. I'm a construction worker and cello player. Are you shocked and dismayed? Anyway, I, I'm quite good at it. And those who can hear me play say that it's a talent. I'm 34 years old and I feel like I have not started living. I want to explore life, discover what the, this world has to offer me. I'm really tired of being stuck in one place, living the same old life, the same old way. I crave adventure and fun. I want to be able to say that I have lived. I know it's possible, even with how fractured the society seems like now. That's why I'll keep asking the question, does the country have borders? I don't want to settle down like most or have a family. They seem like petty concerns for me, and it's not something I think I should be disturbed with. I really just want to explore and finally have some answers to my questions. Here's something over here. Author, writing is my life. It is my sole purpose in this world, and it is what I will continue to do until the day I die. I'm currently in my 60s, and in what people would call the stage. I'm not ready to retire, not now, probably not ever. I have published many that have been loved by everyone. People really respect me as an author. It wasn't easy getting to the stage, though. It took me about 10 years before my first book got popular. I certainly wasn't looking for the attention. I think that there's a certain joy that comes with knowing that your art, something you made with your hands, is out there in the world, inspiring people to be better. My purpose is to keep writing for my society. I can't ignore what is happening and focus on my life. It isn't just possible. Uh, yeah, nice writing, dude. I have written about the ills and failures of our society and government. After all, if I can't do much to change the situation, I can make people aware of what is going on in their beloved country. In all my novels, I talk about the society and the countries that are still in periods of struggle. I know that my books have touched and inspired many people, and that is the satisfaction that I want. My children, my wife and children are very supportive of my work and proud of my achievements and they keep encouraging me. Maybe, maybe they shouldn't, so. My pen is my weapon against the hardships of this world and I won't ever drop it. And my book signings, some of the things people have said to me only reinforce my decision to keep writing. They tell me that my books have opened their eyes to see the world, what, how it really is, and that they won't stop trying to make it a better place. What more could a writer ask for? I'm the best. The very best. It is your honor to read my words. Goodbye. You're welcome. They would have had multiple attempts by the people to overthrow them and cause unrest. This time around, people. All right. Um, I didn't go in there yet. Oh, poet. There's a poet here. Okay. Well, we got the poet. I hope I can get better soon. I have missed school and all the activities I used to be involved in. I didn't rhyme. It wasn't like I had a very active life in school, though, but I was learning. I think I'm one of the few people who study what their dream career is to be. My mother is a cleaner and she works really hard. She didn't get any formal education and that is what she can do. My father works as a miner and is usually at the mines. I'm the only child. My parents say that they want to be able to take care of their children and they know it's only one that they can take care of. I commend them for now for that. Commend them for that. Some people just have children without planning for the long term. People say that I'm successful for my age. I'm in my twenties and I have published many poems. I love writing and I write poems. It's the perfect way for me to express myself and I know that I'm quite good at it. 
I published a few of my poems and anthologies, and they have gained limelight. People want to hear more from me, and I'm more than willing to abuse them. I was a student at the Faculty of Letters, and it was just one step in achieving my goals. I have really learned a lot, and I wouldn't have chosen any other path. Unfortunately, now I've fallen sick, and I've had to take a break from school so I can focus on recovering from time to time, but I can't wait to be back on my feet and write with the ferocity I had before. I don't want to be a burden to my parents. I know how hard they're struggling. And that's my poem. Did you like it? You did not? How dare you? Wait, did I already, I already talked to this guy, right? This is the writer. Author, yeah. Author, poet. Uh, okay, and um, then there's... The entrance, I think there's an entrance over there to get inside the building. I don't know if I want to go to it though. Maybe I'll go to it in the next video. I just feel exhausted. Alright, this is a poet, right? Okay. <coughs> oh man, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. That's not good. Let's drink water. Here's my water. <sighs> this, they all, do they all have skeleton faces like this? It's like a skeleton face, isn't it? They all have those faces? Have I, have I only just not now noticed that there's a skeleton face? I think most of them had human faces, not like a weird monster face like that. Baker. Fresh bread. The smell was heavenly, simply divine. There was something about baking bread that filled me with so much satisfaction. I'm pretty sure they meant to say so much satisfaction. Right? Eh. Wait, I need something to stir this with. Man, I need to wash my dishes. I'm using a handle of a fork to stir my weird coffee water. Alright. Ah, right. So much satisfaction. Uh, it actually has some action. Yeah. 43 years old, the smell of fresh bread still brought back sweet memories. Growing up, my mother baked bread every morning to feed us. It was our staple food, and we had it for breakfast every day. I remember being in the kitchen with her, helping her out. My father was a farmer and sold his produce so we could get by. I knew we were living a hard life, but every time I saw my mom bake bread, uh, all my worries would float away. She usually looked at peace then too. It's, uh, it's a pity that they're both dead. Uh, baking bread every morning is a uh, habit I still have. Fortunately for me, I work at a bakery. I went to work every morning and made the bread uh, for everyone to eat. When I was down, I would take some home to my lovely son and eat To me, happiness is so right. My wife often teases me about it, and I take it in faith. With the way the world is presently, I think I'm lucky to be doing something I love doing for a living. Many people don't have it as easy as I do, and I hope they will find their, way, their own source of happiness like I found mine. I really like bread. Uh, is that right? You like bread, huh? I, I wouldn't have guessed. When I'm asked what I like about it, I always tell them that it's bread. What is there not to like about it? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, look at it. I started to teach my son how to bake. He's only six, but I know he'll grow up to love it as much as I did. Do. And who knows? Maybe I've started a family legacy. My parents would be so proud. I like his baker guy. He's great. I think this game's not, like, so bad. I feel like there's... There should be more to games than this. And the slow walking does kill me. But, like, these stories are not... I don't think any of these stories are all that bad. They're all kind of interesting in their own way. So, I, I'll give them some credit. Um, you know, this is... This concept for a game doesn't entirely not work. Put it that way. Like, it kind of doesn't work, but it sort of works on some level 
so I know I'll be able to go in there later. I might, I might do that in the next video. I might just like explore the whole outside area and not go in there. Can I go in here? There's some stuff in here too. Jesus. Will this, will this ever end? At least there's only like one or two guys in here. I guess I should deal with these two guys. All right, let's do this. I think the larger building I might explore in the next video. I was thinking I would get it all done in this video, but I mean, there's only so much you can expect of me playing this game. It's it's exhausting. I can't, like, it's like I can't just quit now because I don't want to walk all the way back up here again. So I have to do I have to do these parts. There's there's no choice. I can't stop. I can't stop now. Bureaucrat, a 57 year old bureaucrat. He came from abroad, but no one knows he is an agent. His job is to conduct research on the country's defense. No one here knows who I really am. It's funny how they don't even have a clue that I'm not just a civilian like the rest of them. I'm a 57-year-old bureaucrat. I came from abroad, I came from abroad to this country, and I've been conducting a lot of research. My job is to conduct research on the country's defense and give reports back to my bosses. It isn't an easy job, and it's not something I enjoy doing, but I don't anyway. I think you meant to say that you do it anyway? It's not like I really have a choice about it. I've already signed up for the job, and I'm a man of my word. I have a family back home. Only my wife knows what I do for, for work. My children don't know, and I think I'll like to keep it that way. No, you think you'd like to keep you'd like to keep it that way. I think I'd I'd like to keep it that way. That's what it should be. They only know what I work for they only know that I work for the government and that I had something to do about abroad from time to time. Over here, I had no friends. It was one of the rules of the job. For us not to form attachment to the things and people we had to go and work. Over here I had no friends. It was one of the rules of the job for us not to form attachment to the things and people where we had to go and work. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How do you flub the last lines of the story? So this is probably supposed to say, over here, I have no friends. It was one of the rules of the job for us not to form attachment to the things and people where, uh, for the things and people where, where we, have to go and work. <laughs> I don't know. People who, who live where 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 we have to go and work. Who are, I don't know. How, I don't know how the sentence is supposed to go. But this is this ain't it. This ain't it, Chief. All right, one more guy in here, and then we have to go back outside and see if there's more guys out there. Uh, banker. I had the average life. That was how it uh, send like to the outside world. That was how it seemed to the outside world. That's what you mean to say. I went to work like a normal person and came back home to be with my dog. I had a happy little life with my dog. I'm sure that is what people think of me. And I guess that just a couple of months ago, that would be true. I'm 46 years old and I work at the bank as a senior executive. It wasn't easy climbing the ladder at work, but I put in the work. Having a family uh, certainly helped. I could concentrate and out in long hours of work at work with night anyone nag nagging at me. <laughs> no. Let's just keep going. I don't, I don't know what the hell that said. I think he's saying that he liked to be away from his family so no one would nag him. I don't know. I also didn't have a lot of responsibilities. It was just me and my dog. My life started to go downhill when I went out to get mail one day as usual. I was just expecting the occasional spam messages and letters at, from my bank when I came across a strange letter. Reading that letter had given me the shock of my life. It was from someone I didn't know, and the summary w was that I was being blackmailed. It felt like a dream, but I knew it was very real. The letter had clear instructions and told me to transfer money to an online e-wallet. I knew that those were impossible to trace. I could have gone to the police with this, but I was more afraid that if what would happen I was more afraid if what would happen if the truth ever came to life wait what what did they have again 
being blackmailed. What were you being blackmailed about, though? It doesn't say what you were blaming being blackmailed about. What was the truth? About five years ago, oh, I see, okay, they're, they're explaining it now. I was involved in a hit and run. I was the driver who ran. I hit another car, and the car had somersaulted page landing upside down. Really, now you tell us? Do you think you should have told us that earlier, and then we would, like, then the blackmail would be, uh, never mind. I panicked and drove away. Also, that sentence was a mess. I hit another car, and the car had somersaulted beige landing upside down. Nope, no, just, just keep going. I panicked and drove away. I later watched the news and saw that the entire family died, and I was <laughs> Oh my god, I shouldn't laugh at that, but it's just so funny the way, the way it was all described. Alright, this game is kind of bad. Like, it's kind of, the game is sort of, like, it's sort of good at times, and it's also sometimes it's bad, but then when it's bad, it's like so bad that it's good. So it's like, it's, this game is actually an acceptable game. I think I'm going to wind up reviewing, giving this a decent review score somehow. That's crazy. I, I, I hated this game, but now I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, oh shit. The Stockholm Syndrome setting in. The letter explained, if a game keeps you in it long enough, you'll start to like it. That's what I started to realize. It's like I couldn't leave because I needed to review it. And then now I'm like, I think I kind of like this. I love this game. It's my favorite game. All right, I took my gaze off the road for a minute. The letter explained in great detail. Now you're telling us that? The letter explained in great detail what happened that day. You can't take your, you can't take your gaze off the road for a minute. That's too long. That's like, like a huge amount of time while driving. <laughs> like what is that? What, what is your point in saying that? It sounds like you're saying, I took my gaze off the road for a minute. The letter explained in great detail what happened that day and said I would go to jail because they had evidence. So to the outside world, I'm an average banker, but no one knows I'm being blackmailed. And that's generally how blackmail works, man. <laughs> Good story. Thanks for, thanks for telling me how it all ended. <laughs> You're being blackmailed. The end. <laughs> I'm being blackmailed. The end. <laughs> great story. You just like end, end, end the story in the middle. Everything seemed ordinary. Then one day I was blackmailed. The end. <laughs> this is the story. I seem like an ordinary guy. I've been pretty successful. I have a dog. One day I got blackmailed. Um, I'm blackmailed because I had a car accident where I killed a family. The end. <laughs> That's the whole story. <laughs> okay, that was just like... That was just like, despite Eddie's hypos, that was just a terrible story. There's no, there's no excuses for that one. Okay, wait, there's something out here. I can see there's something out here. Okay, this is the guy, this is the guy I talked to him earlier, right? The baker. But there's another guy right there. Alright, um, alright. The pianist. I am a 32-year-old pianist. Everyone who listens to me play is uh, always amazed. They tell me how talented I am and how I must make sure to never keep my gift hidden. I've played in different shows and concerts, and I've had to travel the world, travel a lot. It has been a wonderful, and it has been wonderful, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love playing the piano. It's usually a moment where I can truly be myself. Alone with the notes flowing from it, it almost feels like I've been transported to another realm, one where I have complete control. I could decide where the notes begin and where they would end. It was beautiful, really, and I'm grateful to my family for making sure I took those piano lessons. Who knew it would work out like this? I have a big family, and we have always stuck together through the chaos of the world. They're the ones I, I know I can count on. They're my biggest supporters, and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if not for them. I want to have a big family of my own someday. A family where love is evident and everyone isn't afraid uh, uh, to be who they are or follow their dreams. I think my childhood, um, some, I think about my childhood sometimes. When I do, all I can remember are the screams, uh, the noise, 
the dust clouds and, and broken windows. I guess it must have been a traumatic moment for me and my brain suppressed the memories. Is he talking about when the, the apocalypse, like when the world ended? That happened during his childhood and then he went and played piano? I, I don't know. Whenever I asked my parents about that time, they would get sad before telling me about how terrible it was when the society crashed. And then he became a pianist afterwards? No one saw it coming and it's the end of most families. Not ours though, we have strived in the face of hardship and will continue to do so until you become a skeleton sitting on a bus stop. I assume, I assume these people aren't just like skeletons that are frozen in time. Like these people are dead skeleton people because of the bleak dystopia. Uh, now all the people haven't been skeletons, have they? I, I swore some of them had normal faces up to now. Maybe I just was assuming they had normal faces because I didn't look that closely. I think maybe they are all skeletons. God damn, it's kind of hard finding all these people out here. I guess I'll go talk to this one since I'm here. Uh, police. No one knows what I go through inside my head. Not even my family. I have a happy family. My wife and daughter make me very happy, but there's a secret I haven't shared with them. I often have to go to the psychiatrist. It's just uh, something that refuses to go away. Even at 43. One would think that being an adult meant you didn't have many worries beyond work and your taxes. They don't know how wrong they are. I'm struggling so much trying to keep everything together, but I have to keep a calm front for everyone around me. It feels like too much work. When I was young, my father committed suicide. It was a terrible period in my life. My father was also a policeman, and maybe I'm just repeating the sins of my father. My father had to complete a secret mission that involved him killing a lot of people. What? Are you sure he was a policeman and not like a corrupt contract hitter? Uh... Or I guess it could be both. He completed the mission, but it aided him. Uh, what he had done. He was never happy after that mission. When he died, a note uh, was left. he left was discovered. He wrote, When a lot of blood is shed, there will be prosperity for the society. <coughs> if so, why does my soul hurt? Oh, man, that's, that's rough. Anyone could see that what he did weighed on his soul heavily. I don't know why, but I, I just can't get out of my head. The fact that I'm also working as a police isn't uh, even helping matters. I think you can say a police in some places. It's like, uh, I think it's, that's not like some Detroit slang or something, I don't know. That's why I keep going to the psychiatrist, uh, hoping that my trauma can be cured. It's something I really want to be free of. I have nightmares of my father surrounded by Surrounded my dead bodies. You see, I was getting into it, and then you think it was a typo. Surrounded my dead bodies. By dead, by dead bodies, probably. Other nights, it's me who's surrounded by dead bodies. I just hope everything stops someday. I keep hoping, and it's the only thing that keeps me going. All right, I feel like I pulled through that okay, despite the typos. But I mean, you gotta forgive me for that. that was, that was a, that was a badly, it was a really badly placed typo. I felt like it was like, it was a good story. It was a good like emotional moment, and then they ruined it with like a typo, of course, because of course they did. Like absolutely, of course they did. Okay, I, I need to go back, I guess, because I probably missed something. There we go. I knew, I knew there was something here. Look at this, flung out of the bus, conductor. I'm a retired conductor, and I often think about my life working on the steam train. It was a very stressful and uh, taxing job, but it got the bills paid and I wasn't complaining. Besides, I've stopped working now, and I don't really have a family. It was something uh, that always seemed uh, bothersome to me. I had uh, many friends though, and we hung out from time to time. Who to my the steam train I've gone abroad many times I can't even count how many trips I've been on in total many people got in the train and I got to see all manner of different people is that so is that how it works everyone had a different way of life and it was really fun to see I recorded them all in my memory I saw the best dad the, the bus the best dads 
The tired mom, moms, the bust dads. The be best dads? Why do dads get to be the best and the moms get to be tired? And tired moms and the teenagers not knowing what they were going to do and they're uh, with their lives. Every time I, hear, I see the word moms, I start switching to a British accent. So in case you wonder why the accent's changing, that's why. I saw them all. At the end of the day, I came to a conclusion. There was something all these people had in common, even in their pursuit of whatever it was that kept them going. At the end of the day, everyone had only one wish. It wasn't more money, though they chased that endlessly. It wasn't to have more jewelry or more cars. Though what I understood from my years of working on the steam train and observing them was that people's one wish to have peace. It was the reason they chased money so much, so they could reach a point in their lives where they had peace. And to be honest, that's what I want too, genuine peace. Though it's providing, it's proving hard to have in this world that has gone to pieces. But I know that it's more than possible. And I constantly wish and pray for all those people I saw uh, come and go on the steam train that they eventually find peace too. Okay, did, did, I, did I do this one yet? I feel like I probably did, but I'm not sure now. I'm getting confused. Bus driver. I don't think I did the bus driver, right? What a cool life I have. I often marvel at myself. I work as a bus driver and I drive the same road every day. To be honest, I'm having the best time of my life. I know that there are people that will look down at me with pity but I'm sure I have more satisfaction with my life than they did with theirs. I'm in my 40s and when I'm not driving the bus, I'm spending the rest of my time studying philosophy. I've had to unlearn a lot of things and learning philosophy has really changed the way that I see the world. I used to be very rich, stinkingly so. Uh, my father is a wealthy businessman and he lives abroad. I left him because I was angry. My father was driven my greed. He was driven by greed. And this unquestionable desire to, take, to make money. At all costs. At all costs is one sentence. At all costs. I guess I, I don't mind a sentence like that. It's fine. I've witnessed him do some terrible things. All, I just wasn't prepared for it. It was to make money. At all costs. I've witnessed him do some terribly, terrible things all in the name of money. I decided I wasn't going to be a part of that anymore. I couldn't be this work for him or be under him when I knew of his practices. My father had called me to join him several times, sometimes pleadingly, sometimes with threats, but I have refused to go. I understand why he keeps calling on me. And apart from the fact that I'm his son, I happen to be his only son and he wants me to take over the business. He doesn't want to fall in the hands of a stranger. Fall into the hands of a stranger. Come on then, get it together. Well, not me, them. It's, a, it's, a, it's another typo. Well, unfortunately for him, being a bus driver has proven to be great for me. I don't have to do much besides drive all day and driving is something I happen to enjoy. I also get to see all manner of people get on the bus, get on my bus. It's entertaining and refreshing. I'm not going, I'm not giving up this life anytime soon. All right, good for you. Yeah, I've turned myself all around now. Did I do this one yet? Aerospace engineer, oh, Jesus Christ. I'm so lost right now. I, I did not realize that this guy was here. Okay, my dream finally came true. Ever since I was little, my only dream was to reach the stars. <coughs> I was so fascinated with the stars and outer space, my parents encouraged me and brought me telescopes and books about space travel. I was always trying to know more about how the stars could hang above us so prettily. Of course I grew up and learned that stars weren't that little. They just appeared like that because of how far, uh, how far they were from Earth. I still wanted to explore space regardless. It just seemed like this mysterious place and I wanted to know its secrets. I studied uh, researches 
of studies conducted in space and digested all the information regarding astronauts. That was what I wanted to do with my life. Unfortunately for me, things like space travel institutes don't exist anymore. The world is still focused on rebuilding. After college, I went abroad and did some more research about space and all it entails. I'm aware now that it isn't possible for me to reach the stars literally, but I still wanted to go to outer space. When I came back to my country, I founded the Aviation Institute. It seemed crazy back then, but I was determined. We had to be able to explore the world outside of our planet, even now when it seemed like it wasn't important. Sooner than later, scientists, engineers, and technicians started to work in the institute that I founded. My parents were there with me every step of the way, supporting me with advice and sometimes even with funding. The Aviation Institute started to get donations from wealthy individuals who were also excited to develop space travel knowledge. Currently 28 times, I'm currently 28, and I've been inter interviewed several times and called the most successful person still in their 20s. It's work. Are you also a skeleton? I think all right yeah so I'm I'm back with the the spy right the bureaucrat yep And the blackmailed guy. Wow. Ugh, it's hard to find your way around here. Is there more stuff out here? I think there probably is. I'm exhausted. I, I don't I don't want there to be more people out here. I wanna I wanna stop. I'm tired. It's too much in this game. Too much stuff going on. Uh, am I gonna have to go in here? I am. Shit. There's at least two guys in here. And I think another guy all the way over there. Alright, I guess we'll start with this guy. Athlete. Often when I come back from practice, I look around at the street I grew up on, and I'm transported to how my life used to be. I remember the days I ran around to, to cook dinner before my father came back. My mother had left when I was little, and my father still refused. To let, tell me the reason why. He refuses. He refuses. Sometimes I wonder. Come on. Come on now. Hire, hire somebody to edit your shit. Sometimes I wonder if she truly did it on purpose. Or if she truly wanted me. I always tell my father that I'm going to make him proud. I was one of the best athletes in the country. And as wild as it may seem. I think I might make it to the Olympics with a little more practice. I always dream of the day I would run the tracks of the Olympics and wonder if mother would recognize me. Jesus, I've been playing for 40 minutes. I guess I better end the, save the video clip soon. Start a new one. I guess I can go a bit further. Uh, on my, on, would recognize me on television. At 24, um... It probably is embarrassing that I keep yearning for my mother, but I just have a lot of questions for her. My mind won't ever be at rest till those questions are answered. My father has been a minor since I could remember. It is fascinating how he doesn't complain too much about back pains. He still feels guilty about mothering us, so he put, both of, he put it on his shoulders to take care of both of us. He always says he wish he could be more, but he is more than enough. During a while, I realized the problem would have been with mother and not with him. I remember the day I was among top, the top athletes in our country. I felt proud of myself. Mother should have heard too. Father did say she doesn't live far. Okay, thanks. Very helpful. All right, well, looks like there's nothing else here. Now I can go inside, I guess. Jesus. Will this ever end? Wait, is this the same place? Am I back with the 
Is this a bureaucrat? Am I lost? No, this is different. Officer. What a boring life. I'm pretty sure not everyone can survive living a life like mine. I'm 38 years old and I work as a civil servant. My job is so literally... is to literally just to read about a dozen files um, each other. I often wonder how I found myself in this life. I don't like my job. In fact, there is little that makes me happy. It's not like I have a wife or family to come home to. It was just me living alone, doing things myself. I don't have friends either, and maybe that's not a good thing. I just don't know how to form friends. I have a few work buddies that I talk to, but outside of work, we don't talk or have anything in common. I've been playing the harmonica ever since I was little, and I've always had questions. I wondered if all the songs are similar. If the songs of the waiting people can carry the same tunes, or if everyone is waiting the same way. I don't have any answers to it, but I still ask questions in my mind. I still play the harmonica at home, and I have plenty of them. It's like a collection. I think I'm the only one who loves harmonicas this much. I mean, it's such a boring hobby for a boring man. I'm 38 years old, and I don't have anything that drives me or inspires me apart from playing the harmonica. Ugh, you and your harmonica. I don't think there's anything else I like doing. I should be grateful to my dad for teaching it to me. I should be grateful, but sometimes I'm resentful. He could have taught me about different wonderful things rather than just the harmonica. You, okay, we get it, man. Harmonica. He raised me alone, and maybe that's why I turned out the way I did. Harmonica. Harmonica, harmonica. Harmonica. Translator. I, I love my daughter so much, but hardly a day goes by that I don't think of my husband. I'm a 38-year-old woman, and I've been raising my two daughters myself for a couple of years now. It hasn't been easy to say the, at the, to say the least. I didn't realize how hard single parents had it. My husband was a lieutenant, and he worked in the army. I don't know if he's still working there uh, when the whole destruction started and everywhere was unstable. He sent us to the farthest part of the country and asked us to live there. The plan was for him to join us later on. Later on, He sent us to somewhere safe so we would not be harmed. He claimed it was, a dangerous, uh, it was dangerous staying where he was, and I understand. We all did. I used to work for, as a translator before we moved, and after a couple of months, I got a job to work as a translator over here. I had to work to be able to provide for the, my girls. I still clung tightly to the hope that my husband was going to join us soon. Now, I don't know what has happened to him. I don't know if he's dead or alive, if he's still trying to reach us, or if he has made a new life for himself. Every night I think about him, and I pray that we can be reunited soon. I don't want to lose hope, but it's, it's hard sometimes. My girls are starting to forget him, and I try not to let that happen. Before they used to ask me questions about him, and when he was coming back, I always told them that he was going to be back soon. But now, it seems like a far away... Yeah. I think there's another word there, but it's, um... Uh... It's not reachable. Uh, far away... Oh, now it seems like a far away dream? Maybe dream? Or thing? Okay, well, I gotta walk all the way back. <sighs> You're killing me. You're killing me. I think we might be able to do one more in this video, or hopefully we can discover that there aren't any more in this video, because I don't want to do any more. Wait, I already did this one, right? This is the, this is the bus, the conductor, yeah. Okay. Please be over. Please, oh no, there's at least that guy there. All right, there's at least one more. Uh, probably more. I guess not, just one more. But maybe this will be the last one. Nope, there's at least that one. There's at least two more. Ugh, Jesus Christ. Alright, I have time to do at least one or two more in this video. Let's, let's go. Librarian. I think about the impact my article has made among people, and I'm happy with the results. 
everyone who reads the article has been asking me, asking and thinking about which statesman I am. They don't know I'm just a humble man uh, working in a small bookstore. I'm a history teacher and teaching history is great for me. It's not good for one to get forget his roots. That's what I tell my students when I teach them. I'm 54 years old and I live alone. I think my father has a role to play in who I have become. He was a farm worker and was killed during a raid when I was little. Although I can't remember him clearly, there is an incident I can never forget. I remember my father defending his rights by forming a group with his uh, friends. So together they fought against injustice and tyranny and made great headway in freeing those that had been de deprived of their rights. I remember them meeting in our small house then and my father giving us a very inspiring speech. I always thought he was some sort of hero. Now sharing an article that has become popular was filled, has filled me with great joy. I know my father will be proud of me. I didn't publish the article with my name, but rather with a nickname someone can trace ba it back to me. Oh, okay. Yep, with a nickname someone can trace it back to me. Even though the article speaks in support of equal rights and fair treatments of others, I'm being careful so what befell my father won't happen to me. It's great that the people think I could be a statesman. Do they though? I'll just be in the shadows for now. Uh, yep, your father will be so proud. No, there's another one in there. At least one in there. Uh, I thought it was done. I guess I have time for one or two more. Still. Jesus. Okay. Is there is there like another side of this house? I hope not. Okay, good, good. Oh, this is the end. I'm at the end. Yes. And there, is there more over there? Because I just want to be done with this. I want so badly to end this video. And I'm about to. Yes, all I have to do is this one and the one other guy in there and I'll be done. Nice. Doctor. Life. It can deal you the worst... In, it can deal you with the worst possible hands. My life was going smoothly till an event happened um, uh, that set a roller coaster of misfortunes and sorrow for me. Did it? Did it, did it set a roller coaster of misfortunes and sorrow for you? What a way to phrase that. I had a happy life, and looking back now, it seems like I took a lot of things for granted. I was happy then, not anymore. I grew up in a living home. My parents lived me a lot, and I was their only child. I think you mean to say they loved you a lot. I walked in my father's path of career and became a successful medical doctor. You walked in your father's path of career, huh? Okay. I was their pride. Just their pride, huh? That's it? You were their pride? Okay. Things fell apart because my father was accused of murder and was in prison. I guess you could say that you were somebody's pride. I just feel like you usually see pride and joy. It feels a little empty there. It felt uh, like a dream. I didn't believe it. <clears throat> my father was trained to save lives, not harm them. Not, harm them. <laughs> not to harm them. <laughs> I guess you could call murdering someone harming a life. He was accused of some killing political leaders. Some killing political leaders. Huh? Okay. And was found guilty in court. He was sentenced to prison. My mother couldn't take the heartbreak and shame. <clears throat> and she killed herself. I still remember walking into the room to see her lying dead on the floor, a bottle of some pills behind her. I had tried to wake her up, and I quickly called the hospital. Wait, aren't you a doctor? It was evidence that she was already dead. Uh, you can tell as a doctor, huh? I dealt with their grief and moved on with my life. Do you, get, do, you do CPR at least? I hope you did CPR. I stayed alone and, re and rarely relate with other people outside of the hospital. Now I'm 37 years old. And it has just been revealed that my father was innocent, is innocent. All those wasted years, the fact that it was his imprisonment that led to my mother's death. It led to my mother's death. Everything feels surreal. I keep asking myself if this isn't a long nightmare. It feels like it is. I'm working on my father's release now, and it's the only thing I'm looking forward to. Having him back after so many years. 
Now we can live together and maybe someday heal together. Outside of that giant. Ugh, Jesus Christ. <coughs> How many trophies can they put in the game? This is another skeleton? Yeah, they're all skeletons. Nurse. Sometimes I just want to curl up into a ball and cry for hours. I don't. Instead, I go to work and smile. I live alone as a 37 year old woman. It can get pretty lonely. I visit my mom from time to time, and we talk about work and life. She works as a nurse, and, I'll, uh, and I happen to find myself in the nursing profession also. There has been this friction between us. This is the strain on our relationship ever since my dad left. He was a soldier, and growing up, I got used to not seeing him for long periods of time. Then he would come, and there would be life and joy in the house. My mom always felt better when he was around. I did too. They summoned my father to duty some years ago, and it wasn't something new. He got summoned all the time. Um, uh, the only thing different about this time is the fact that my father hasn't returned. No call, no letter, and no single word from him. It's almost like he has disappeared from the face of the world. There's no news from him, of him either. We don't know what's, what has happened to him. He may be dead for all we know. My mom confessed to me uh, one day that she wished they would bring news of his death. She said not knowing was much worse. If he was dead, then we would be able to grieve properly. But now it's almost like we're stuck, like there's no moving forward until we know the truth. I think it's a big part of why I haven't been able to settle down with anyone. I don't know if I can open myself up to anyone else, someone else, and I always run away at the first hint uh, uh, if attachment. It's all because deep down I'm scared that they will leave me too, and it will hurt too much. So I make um, something. All right, let's. We're almost done. One more. Yes, we did it. Scientist. I grew up in a poor household. My parents were practically peasants. It was from there that I developed resilience and, and that was helpful to push me forward in my life. It was either to wallow in self-pity or to rise up and make something out of myself. I chose to do the latter. I believe that agriculture is essential and important to the country's economy. That's why I've invested so much into it. I'm a scientist, but most of my experiments have resolved around, revolved around agriculture because that's what I what was I majored in. That's what was I majored in. Growing up, <coughs> we didn't have much to eat. Sometimes we would only manage um, uh, to eat just once a day. Life was terrible. I resented my parents so much for giving birth to me, just for me to come to a life of suffering. They tried hard to find work though, but with how crumpled so the society was, they couldn't find enough to do to be comfortable with their lives. I lived a hard life but managed to educate myself. As soon as I could work, I out myself out in the field. I started doing odd jobs and it started to get more money. I sent myself to agriculture technology. That was when I got so invested in agriculture. People shouldn't struggle so much just to eat and survive. The purpose of my study was to increase productivity in agriculture. I'm 60 years old now and I believe that I'm achieving a lot. A delegation examined my work. They took samples from my experiments and took them abroad. I thought it would be a stepping stone for me to further my career and to help my research reach everywhere. After a while though, my work hasn't still been studied, researched, translated, or even banned as harmful. Let's read that last sentence again. I thought it would be a stepping stone for me. Okay. After a while, though, my work hasn't still been studied, researched, translated, 
or even banned as harmful. Okay, I, I don't know what to say about all that. Oh, I almost made it over this, this chair or something. There's like nothing in my way here. I just can't, I can't, just can't go out. All right, but I think we're done here. We did it. Uh, thank you, gods. We are done. Uh, we, we, we've done the whole, the whole outdoor area. I've, I've seen every single dead body out here, I think. Um, so that's great. Um, if I miss any, I might be able to find the one guy that I'm missing with like a trophy guide or something. But I think, I think it won't come to that. I think, uh, uh, we've seen everybody and it's all good. Um, so yeah, um, we stop here and next time I'll be going into that big shopping mall building and doing all the stuff in there. But that's for the next video. I need I need a fucking break from this game, man. So this this thing is sapping my goddamn soul. See y'all next time.